Hi everybody. Okay, in this tutorial, what I'm going to show you how to do is use Excel to generate binomial probabilities. Um, in Chapter 6 of your Brace and Brace text, you should already know that the binomial distribution is a discrete probability distribution where it only considers two outcomes and that the inputs for this particular probability distribution if you're doing it in Excel or when you're doing it in Excel is N which is the number of trials, R which is the number of successes out of N trials and P which is the probability of success in one trial. So in this particular example that we're using um, from the Solvix your Excel 2010 guide on page 50, a surgeon regularly performs a certain difficult operation and the probability of success for any one such operation is 0.73 or 73 percent. Ten operations are scheduled. So we're going to be looking at finding the probability of success for 0 through 10 successes out of these operations. So basically for the most part what we're going to do is we're just going to look at a few examples and the first thing that we're going to talk about is how to do it. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to have two columns. One column you want to label R. R is the number of successes out of N trials. That column will start at 1 and it will go up to the number of trials that it tells you in the problem that you're working. You have two ways of doing this. You can either go in and you can either manually enter these numbers or you can and I'm just going to delete this for a minute. You can use your fill function over here which means that you're going to input 0 and then you're going to go over to your field function, go down to series, you're going to click column, you're going to tell it to increment by 1, which is your step value, and you're going to tell it to stop or fill to 10. And there you have 0 through 10. Either way you do it, you can either input it manually or you can use your fill function. Doesn't matter. If you're doing bigger numbers, you want to use your fill function, of course, unless you feel more comfortably doing it manually. If you don't know how to use your field function, that was all discussed in chapter one, so you need to go back and review chapter one. Now here, when it comes down to generating our binomial probabilities, we're going to be doing that in this column here. Okay, so notice that I have the probability of x equals r, which in this particular example will be the probability of having a certain number of successes out of n trials and it's going to be exactly that number of successes out of n trials. In this case it's going to be exactly the number of successful operations out of the 10 operations that have been scheduled. Where to do that I type in equal and I just do binom. Now here or I just do bin. Here I get a menu of everything that starts with bin or binom. I want the binom this. So I'm going to double click it and notice that it fills, it begins filling that cell, but then it tells you what the input is. The first input is the number of successful of the number of successes. Well, we can find those numbers in column A. So I'm going to do dollar A and then I'm going to tell it to start with row two because row two contains zero. And then here it says, okay, what are the number of trials? Well, I type in 10 because there's 10 trials, 10 operations scheduled. And then it says, what is the probability of success? Well, that is 0.73. So I'm going to put 0 0.73. And then comma. Now it says over here cumulative. Now there's a cumulative distribution function and then there's a probability mass function. When we're talking about exact probabilities, we want the probability mass function. Now all of this is explained in your Excel manual. Um, but when you're dealing with exact probabilities, then you want to do the probability mass function. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to double click this. I'm going to close my paren. Now I'm going to hit enter. Now 
to fill the rest of these cells down to 10, down to r equals 10, I'm going to grab this block and I am going to pull it on down and then that's going to populate the rest of those cells for me. So this is the probability of exactly no successful operations. This is the probability of exactly one successful operation. The probability of exactly two. The probability of exactly three. Of exactly four. Of exactly five. The probability of exactly 6, exactly 7, exactly 8, exactly 9, exactly 10. So this column here, this equal sign means exactly. Okay. So now let's look at a couple of examples that I've kind of worked up here for you. Okay, so let's look at this first one. The probability that exactly 2 out of the 10 operations are successful. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my column where it says R is 2, and then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to find that probability. I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to stuff it in there. Now, when I did this, I did this out to five decimal places. Typically, typically, most um, statistical manuals, when you start dealing with probabilities from probability distribution functions, they typically use four. I used five. And there's a reason that I used five. Um, but pretty much, you can round this to four decimal places, okay? Um, if I wanted to look at Let's go down some more. If I wanted to look at the probability that exactly five of the ten operations were successful, then I go to my R column, go down to five, go over here, I grab this number, which is the point zero seven four nine six. I round it to four decimal places. I get this. Okay, so one of the things, if you're going to round, make sure that you use your rules of rounding. If you don't know, then find your tutorial, um, go back, find an old math book, and review what your rounding rules are. Now, we're talking about exact probabilities where we have used our probability mass function and sometimes you'll hear it called a probability density function. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at what we would call a cumulative probability. Cumulative probabilities typically, typically use um, inequalities. Less than, less than, equal to, greater than, greater than, equal to. Okay, so what if we wanted to know the probability that fewer than two of the operations were successful? Well, if you think about what it means for fewer than two. Fewer than two would mean that we have the probability that exactly none of the operations were successful and we have the probability that exactly one of the operations were successful. Notice that because it's less than, two is not included in that interval. So if I wanted to know what that probability is, notice the probability of exactly zero is zero. The probability of exactly one is this point zero 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 six. I sum those two together. That's going to give me the probability that fewer than two of the operations were successful. Now, what if I wanted to know whether or not two or fewer of the operations were successful. In other words, um, if I wanted to know whether less than or equal to two of the operations were successful. So this trip, I'm looking at a cumulative probability that none of the operations were successful or, or means plus, one of the operations were successful or exactly two of the operations were successful. In order to do that, I need to sum these probabilities. Now, again, go back to chapter one. I want to grab this probability for r equals zero, this probability for r equals one, this probability for r equals two. If I want to know that sum, then if you look in the right-hand corner down at the bottom, down near 
where your slider is located that allows you to zoom in, zoom out of your spreadsheet, you will see average, you will see count, and you will see sum. So that sum is going to be 0 .00074. Now suppose I want to bump this up a notch kind of sorta of, and I want to look at the probability that greater than two of the operations was successful. So this trip I'm looking at greater than two so I want to know whether the probability of exactly three, exactly four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 of the operations were successful. Well, since I'm talking about greater than 2, notice that interval doesn't include 2. So what I can do is I can go over here to my probability density function. I can drag this down and come over to where I told you I don't have my screen uh, large enough for you to see it yet or for you to see it. But again, chapter 1 gives you all of that. Then I would get this probability here which out the four decimal places rounds to that probability. If I want to talk about the probability of two or more of the operations being successful then what I could do again is I need to since two is included so I'm looking at the probability of exactly two of them are successful along with all of these other probabilities. I sum them together. I'm going to get a probability of 0.99994. Okay, so pretty much roughly 99.9%. So that is how you would use your probability density function. These last four probabilities that we computed, C, D, E, and F, they're called cumulative probabilities. And they are called cumulative probabilities for a reason. They're cumulative because you had to add the probabilities um, of exact trials, of exact successes, to get the probability of the inequality that you're looking at. Now, when we first did the binom.dist, we saw at the end there was this cumulative true or false. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another column. So this is the probability of x being, and I'm going to go to insert, go to symbol. I'm going to grab my list and equal to right here. I'm going to insert it. I'm going to close this. I'm going to put an R right here, and then I'm going to close paren. In the cumulative distribution function, we are going to look at cumulative distributions. A cumulative distribution just adds exact probabilities together to get a cumulative probability. So let's see how that works. So I have my whole binome, binome disk, double click on it. I use the same inputs as before the number of successes out of n trials well all of that's located in a the number of trials is 10 the probability 0 0.73 and we want to use the cumulative distribution function I'm just going to double click here it's going to say true I'm going to close the paren and I'm going to hit enter now all of that is explained in your manual if you read it Okay, it's important to read the material, it's important to follow the instructions, it's important to look at the diagrams, look at the guided examples that you do, that they give you, go through them, work them, so that you will have a good understanding of it. It's not about, oh, I just need to get an A on this assignment, because again, you have a midterm coming up, and some of you, you had A's on all of your assignments but you know what it's those midterms and it's those finals that actually tell the tale of whether or not you understand it so if I were you I would start working through guided examples and I would start working through some of these examples that they give you in your Excel manual so that you can understand what's going on so again here I'm just gonna grab this tail I'm gonna pull it down and BAM 
I've populated those cells. Now let's talk about what this column means. This was our probability mass function. This is where we get our exact probabilities from. This is our cumulative distribution column. This is where we get our cumulative distribution functions from. So let's talk about what cumulative distribution means. So if I start here at r equals 0, the number of or the probability of none of the operations being successful has a probability of 0. Now, if I wanted to know the probability of less than zero operations being successful, that's just the probability of zero operations being successful. Because again, you have no numbers less than two, okay, or less than zero. If I wanted to look at the probability of at least one, or fewer than one, or one or fewer operations being successful, that's better, one or fewer operations being successful, then what I'm looking at is the probability that exactly none of them were successful added to the probability that none of them were successful. When I do this, if I take this value here, this probability here, add it to this probability here, I get this probability here. If I want to know the probability of two or fewer operations being successful, that's the same as saying exactly none of them were added to the probability that one of them was added to the probability that two of them were. So that's zero plus this one plus that one, and when I add these three together, I'm going to get this value here. So this is the probability of exactly two or fewer, the probability of exactly three or fewer successes, the probability of exactly four or fewer successes, the probability of exactly five or fewer successes, the probability of exactly six or fewer successes, seven or fewer successes, the probability of eight or fewer successes, the probability of nine or fewer successes, and notice we are at our tenth trial, so the probability that all of the operations are successful will add up to a probability of one, as it should. So what you need to understand about cumulative probability is cumulative probability is used when you're using inequalities such as less than, less than, equal to, greater than, greater than, equal to, to find what the cumulative probability of that particular inequality is. So let's look at this example here. Here we have an inequality of the probability of less than 2. Well, the probability of less than 2, since 2 isn't included in here, we're just looking at the probability of exactly 1 added to the probability of exactly, of, I'm sorry, the probability of exactly 0 added to the probability of exactly 1. Since we already know what we're looking at, and since we know that our cumulative distribution gives less than equal to, we've got the right sign, we just need to interpret it so that we can get the right in probability, in probability, Lord have mercy, probability. So we have x equals 0, x equals 1, so if I come over here and I go to this row right here, this point 0, 0, 0, 0006 gives me, in this first column, gives me the probability of exactly 1. Here, this gives me the probability of less than or equal to 1. So notice that this probability is the same as that one. Here, for D, we have the probability that less than or equal to 2. Well, since 2 is included, here, notice, I have the probability. I come down to where R is 2. And you know what? I'm going to change colors on this for a minute. So I'm going to make that column red. And then I'm going to come over here. Ugh.
Oh, good. It didn't change anything. And I'm going to make this column. I was going to make it a blue. How about that? Darker blue. Okay. So, did it do it? I don't think it did it. Let's try it again. A dark blue. Yeah, did it there. Okay, so if I come down to, if I have the probability of x being less than or equal to, notice that our cumulative um, distribution function gives probabilities of less than or equal to the number of successes out of n trials. So if I come down here to 2, in the red is the probability of exactly 2, and in the blue is the probability of less than or equal to 2. Notice this probability is the same as this probability here. And it's important that you understand that. It's also that it, important that you understand that an exact probability is going to be less than a cumulative probability. They give you that hint in the exercises that you have to do. Because if you have an exact probability that if you go back and you look at your problems, if you have an exact probability that happens to be greater than a cumulative probability, um, then you've done something wrong. So that's why they gave you that hint. You don't have to answer that question, but you do need to understand what's going on with an exact probability and a cumulative probability. So now let's look at this. We bumped it up a notch. So we've got the probability of more than two operations being successful. So again, we've strewn out our probabilities here, but we've got this thing called a complement. And when we have a complement, the complement is just basically where we take one minus and we subtract out everything that we don't want. So let's look at how this fares. So here, we have the probability of x being greater than 2. And if we go ahead, that's 1 because remember, the whole probability is going to be 1 minus, so we're subtracting out the probability of exactly none of the operations are successful. We're subtracting out the probability that one of the operations, exactly one was successful, and we're subtracting out the probability that exactly two of the operations were successful. And when we do that, then what we're going to end up with is this number here, which is basically, <coughs> excuse me, which is basically the same as this one. So, what you would do, again, if you know that the probability of being greater than 2 is going to be 1 minus the probability of being less than or equal to 2, then what you could have went ahead and did was went, grabbed this number and subtracted it from 1, and you would have gotten this number. Because if you notice, this number plus this one plus this one adds up to this number here. It's the same thing with this one. <coughs> Excuse me again. We want to talk about the probability of being greater than or equal to 2. This is just 1 minus exactly none of them were successful minus exactly 1 was successful. We subtract out that those probabilities. We get this one. So... Basically, for the most part, what you need to understand is what a cumulative distribution function does. It just adds successive probabilities. And when you get down to this last trial, then when you've added all the probabilities, it's all going to sum to 1, as it should. You learn that. Um, we use the probability mass function when we want exact 
probability. We use the cumulative when we're looking at inequalities like less than, less than equal to, greater than, greater than equal to, and also know that your probability mass is going to be less than your cumulative. In other words, the probability of exactly five operations being successful is going to be less than the probability of five or fewer of the operations being successful. So I hope that this has helped some of you. I hope that it's helped all of you actually. And also when you do the assignment, you need to include your probability density function in there. You are not going to get away with just doing this and not doing this. You need to include both functions in there. Okay? Um, if doing this, writing this out helps you, but at some point you need to be able to see what's going on. So as you're working through your problems, you need to go back and you need to see what you're doing. Um, when you're using a cumulative distribution function. So talk to all you guys later.